Good afternoon and welcome to the Getting Started Training Session. My name is Andy. Today we're going to help you out with getting started with your new ITS dispatch software. To get started with your ITS dispatch software, as an administrator, you're going to go up to the top left-hand side of your screen. Once logged in, again, up top left-hand side of your screen, customers, shippers, consignees, drivers, trucks, trailers, external carriers, custom brokers if you move freight in Canada or Mexico, factoring companies if you factor your receivables or the uh, carriers factor theirs, agent offices if you have that component with the new ITS dispatch software, users, other numbers, third party preferences, and billing for administrator. This is your database. This is where you're going to get started. Okay. So we're going to start with customers, the bill to customer. This is who uh, we're going to invoice so we get paid for a load. By clicking on customers, it's going to open up your database. You're going to click add. Anywhere in a system, you see a red asterisk. These are mandatory fields and are required in order to be able to save it. Excuse me, I'm going to minimize that a little bit, it's too big. Okay, in order to be able to save. If you go click save and you don't have all the information in that is required, it's going to bring up, please correct the following. And it's going to give you all the things that you need to uh, address. Okay, again, you need to put in a bill to customer's name, like say Coca-Cola, their mailing address, 123 Mississauga Street, the country, selecting the country, selecting the state. And when you go to select a city, you need to select from the drop down anywhere within our system that you have the country, state, and city, select from the drop down. I do know most people's uh, typing is a lot qu uh, quicker than sometimes the system, but please again, click on the drop down, it will accept it. If I had to type that in, the likelihood is when I went to the, uh, the zip code, it would have disappeared. Okay? So when you put in the mailing address, you can send the mailing address the same as, and it will fill in this area for you. You can put in a contact person's name, telephone number, email address, secondary contact, etc. Under the bill to customer, you can click on advance. Under advance, American or Canadian dollars, payment terms. If you have like a payment term that you need to select for that particular customer, and this will show up on your invoice. You can set a credit limit to whatever you wish, and then as the loads go through and you invoice them, you will need to come back in if you get to the point that the credit limit has met its uh, limits. Sales reps, you can add a sales rep to a customer, and every time that customer gets used, that sales rep will get added to a sales rep commission. If you are factoring your receivables and you have a factoring company built into the database under admin, you can assign that factoring company to that particular customer. When it comes time to do the invoice, instead of having your company name on the invoice as a payable to, it will have your factoring company. Now you do not have to have a factoring company in there and then what will happen up the top left-hand side of an invoice, it'll have your company name as a payable to. Okay, so there's some simple things oh, as well, notifications, let's touch on that just briefly. You can add a notification. See, a customer wants to know when that load is dispatched or that load's on route or delivered or completed. Putting in their email address and then saving it, every time you change the load status from open to say dispatched, on route, delivered or completing, that uh, customer will receive a notification. The email addresses, it's extremely important you make sure that they do receive it, okay? A lot of times, AOL, .NET, and Yahoo will reject an ITS dispatch email. Reason being is because it says do not reply. So their particular emails uh, view it as spam. So make sure if they have one of those email addresses, they, they do accept it. If not, they might need to give uh, permission for ITS dispatch emails to show up or get a different email address. All right, make sure before you exit out, you always save your changes, and if you're missing information, it is gonna let you know, okay? Don't just go up to the top right-hand side, click exit, because it will not save any of the changes that you have made. 
You can always come back into the system anywhere in our system where you have an edit pencil, come back in and you can edit any of the information that you might have. All right, so let's exit it. I got to make it a little smaller again. All right, let's exit out of there. That's your bill to customer. Okay, and again, under admin, this is your database. Okay, adding a shipper. This is where you're sending your driver or external carrier to go pick up the load. So by clicking on add, you're going to put in the shipper's name, their address, country, state, city, zip, contact person's name, contact email, telephone number, etc. You can put shipping hours like nine to five if there's appointments required, yes or no. And then when you go to create a rate and load confirmation, I'll have all this information on that rate confirmation. You can add notes like go door three and ask for Bob. That again will show up on a rate and load confirmation where uh, the carrier or your company driver will be able to call and uh, make sure they're, they're doing the right thing for that shipper. Okay. Once you've added your shipper, then it's time to go in, admin, consignees, the same deal. All right. Always remember to save your changes or will not save it in the system. Under admin, again, drivers, trucks, and trailers. If you are a carrier and you have your own company drivers, trucks, and trailers, you are going to load this part of the database. If you are a broker and you're brokering freight to external carriers, you will add external carriers to the database. We're just going to touch on it briefly, okay? So let's touch on the company drivers. Adding a driver to the system is quick and easy as clicking add. You can put it their singular team, the driver's name, telephone number, cell phone, email, address, etc. Okay? You can set up a pay schedule for a company driver, like per mile, percentage, or hourly. It is one or the other. It is not all three. If you need to have Andy per mile, percentage, and hourly, you'll have to create Andy as a per mile driver, Andy as an hourly driver, Andy as a percentage driver. Okay? We can get further into that. And again, anything that we have discussed here is under help, training videos, and you can watch how to add a driver, accounting, everything through our training videos. And they're in, you know, two, three to five minute little segments. All right. Back to admin, adding a truck to the system, very straightforward and simple, putting in a truck number, a truck type, okay? For your purpose, you can put in a license plate number, an expiry date, and you will get a notification if you use the expiry date 30 days in advance to that plate expiring. If you have IFTA with us, under the IFTA tab, you need to select the fuel type being diesel, include this truck for IFTA, and then select the state or province that you're registered under, and then click Save. All of the rest of the information is for your benefit only, like mileage, uh, number of axles on the truck. So say you have a dispatcher who's dispatching on nights and he's at home. If he needs it or he had a problem, you can find out what the mileage, what the year of the truck is, uh, the start date, um, the insurance policy number, the gross field Kuwait, the identification number. All right, let's exit out of there. Loading a trailer is the same thing. For those of you that are brokering freight and using external carriers, clicking on external carriers is as easy as clicking add, and we're just going to take one that pre exists. So you have the external carrier's name. You can put in the date when you added that carrier to your list. Okay. Anywhere you see in our system where it says username and password, be cautious, especially if it auto fills your name in there. Okay. Because that's giving the uh, carrier permission or a, a, you know, a username and a password to log in, which you have to give to them. So they can't really log in. But what will happen is when you log out and you log back in, you're going to log in as a carrier and only see the information that that carrier can see, which is going to be very minimum. So please be cautious on a company driver and on an external carrier load or um, setup. If you see the username and password and it automatically fills in here and it's got your name in there, back it out of there. Okay. Now this is only for if you want to give them permission to log in. If you need further assistance with that, again, please don't hesitate. During the regular business hours, give us a call. Any one of us in training support would be glad to help out. All right, adding an address, country, state, city. Again, I can't stress enough. Make sure you select from the drop down that's presented. Okay, contact person's name, email address. Now we can send rate and load confirmations to our company driver and to our external carriers by their email address. 
be sure that the email address you have is a good one and that accepts emails from um, ITS Dispatch that shows as a do not reply. If it does not, you might need to get a different email address. There is nothing that we can do. Again, there's Yahoo, .NET, and AOL are the ones that are commonly that uh, people don't receive emails. Okay, so you can get a different email like a Hotmail or a, uh, a company email like Andy at ITSDispatch.com or a Gmail address. Okay, um, you can set payment terms. This will show up on a rate and load confirmation, or not rate and load confirmation, a carrier payable um, printout. So it shows their payment term, their tax ID number, MC number, et cetera. Uh, you can set insurance up with an external carrier. Once you set up an insurance, you'll have to constantly keep updating it whenever the uh, date is expired. So 30 days in advance to it expiring, you will get a pop-up notification when you go to use that carrier, letting you know that their insurance is about to expire. So thereafter, until such time as you change it, or if you make it mandatory that you need it, uh, upon that date. Okay, um, we're going to touch out of there. Go back to our admin custom brokers. If you move freight into Canada or Mexico, you will require a custom broker. Okay, and it's pretty simple to add. You're just going to put in the broker's name, the crossing like Windsor, Sarnia, Detroit, Buffalo, etc. The telephone number, extension, toll-free number, and that will show up on a rate and load confirmation so your carrier or your company driver will know who to call to cross that border. All right, let's exit out of there. Back to, excuse me, um, admin. Again, this is your database. Once we've built our database, going to create a load becomes point and shoot. All right, so under factoring companies, well, sorry, under custom brokers, you have factoring companies. If your carriers have factoring companies, you can add the factoring company to the database. And once you've added it to the database, you can then go back into the external carrier and add it to the carrier. Then it will make it payable to the carrier or the, the factoring company as to the external carrier. Offices. If you have agent offices with us and you're paying for that component, you'll have this, you'll have this tab so that you can add the agent offices. For those of you that are an administrator, you have the access to users. It is important that everybody has their own username and password to log into the system. If we were all sharing Andy as a user every time somebody logged in, so say I'm logged in at the moment and then somebody else uses my login, it will knock me out of the system. And we'll play that game until such time as we all have our own username and password. It is free for unlimited users. You can set up different permissions. Like say I want Craig to only have a dispatcher uh, permissions. The difference between a dispatcher and an administrator is a dispatcher can do everything. He can do um, load confirmations, add a customer, shipper, consignee, driver, truck, trailer. He just does not see the accounting, dashboard, or reports. Or he does not see the user list in the setup, okay? where an administrator will have access to everything. Okay? You can add a sales rep to a dispatcher or a administrator. Once you have a sales rep added to the user, you can set up a commission schedule. Okay? So that particular individual gets paid 50% on the margin. That's after carrier or driver costs of the load. Okay? Again, if you need further assistance with this, please don't hesitate. Give us a call. Be glad to help out. All right, back to admin. Um, other numbers. Other numbers gives us the ability to have other columns on our dispatch board, like container numbers. Okay, so all we have to do is go add, put in the name, and then show this item on dispatch. Okay, or if not, you just leave it, you know, on. Uh, so that it doesn't show up on the dispatch board. And when you're inside of the load, you can select from the one that you wish to show up on a rate and load confirmation. All right, and that is other numbers. Back to admin, third party. If you are doing bill of ladings for a external carrier or company driver because the shipper is not giving one to them and you need a third party billing person's name on it, Clicking here, third party, you add the person's name, address, telephone number, and then when you're inside of the load, you can add a BOL with a third party person's name on it. It's a tongue twister, isn't it? Back to admin. 
All right, preferences. Again, only an administrator will have the access to the preferences. And the preferences, it's showing your account setup, your company name. Now, with a company name, if you need to have changes like Waterfront Property LLC or, um, you know, one of the uh, INC, you know, uh, we would need to do that from ITS Dispatch, okay, and your account number. You can change your primary contact person's name, your telephone number, extension, etc. You can change the currency setting from American or Canadian to American dollars. Okay, your date format, year, month, day, day, month, year, etc. Now that will be just the way that it is displayed on your ITS dispatch. It will show up still commonly on the reports as year, month, day. Okay. Um, your company mailing address. You can change it in here on your own. Settings, again, there's a multiple different settings of which you can change. Uh, and you need further assistance with that, I suggest you give us a call and we'll be glad to help you out with this. Under preferences, you have a notes tab. Under the notes tab, you can add specific notes like uh, possibly flow sheet notes, like um, the driver must call in on a daily basis and whatever phone number information, or for a external carrier load where you're brokering freight, maybe you might want to have your legal information. Once saved, this will show up on every rate and load confirmation. Again, under preferences and admin, feel free, give us a call. We'll be glad to help you further with this. All right, so back to admin, this is your account setup. All right, once you have your account set up, it's time to start creating some loads. So you have two different types of loads, new active load or new pending load. A new active load will look like this. Once you save it, it will have a load number and it'll be an open active load. Why would you use the difference? Well, a new active load requires a majority of the information in order to save it. If I don't have all that information, I might need just to exit out and wait until I do, or I can go to a new pending load with basic information. Maybe I, maybe I have a bill to customer. And so Andy Streaming and I have a, a rate. So we've got a $10,000 rate. I know he's going to need a boat hauling trailer. And we're going to click save. I'm going to wait for the rest of the information. I have just created a not assigned pending load. And now I can wait for the rest of the information. Once I have the rest of the information, I'm going to click on my letters NA go inside and continue building that load. That's the difference between a new active and a new pending load. Other than that, once I change this load from an open or from a pending to an open active load, it will automatically assign a load number in sequence to the next load number I've created. Okay? And that's how you create a load. Pretty straightforward and simple. Okay? We're going to just quickly exit out of this. I'm going to delete it because that's a good thing about a new pending load. I did not delete a load number. Any deleted loads are gonna show up here under dispatch, load manager, refuse, deleted, and lost. So you can see all the not assigned pending ones I've deleted, and actually you can see the ones with load numbers. If I need to recreate that load number, 1135, all I have to do is click on that green arrow Click OK and refresh my page, and 11:35 shows back up on my dispatch board. Okay, simple as that. Okay, you can delete that load if it's not if it didn't take place, it didn't happen, and I don't want to overwrite it by clicking on the drop-down status. Go to delete load, and again, that load now is in dispatch, load manager in the refuse deleted section. And this is the only section which you'll find that load that is deleted. A lot of people come across, well, how do I find a load that's been done in the past? Very straightforward again and easy. Under dispatch, load finder, just click search. You can open up your date range, you can search by load numbers, you can search by a multiple of different things. But right now I'm just searching from July to um, present. You can search by, you know, um, the load numbers, sending or descending, okay? And there it shows all my loads. Now, if I'm looking 30, 31, 36, well, what happened to 34, or 32, 30, uh, uh, 33, 34, and 35? Well, then you're going to have to start looking a little further. Maybe open your date range or go into here, 
load manager, refuse, deleted, and lost. And you're gonna see where your other loads are, okay? So keep that in mind. Under dispatch, load manager, you can find deleted loads. Under dispatch, load finder, you can find all of the loads except for the de deleted loads, okay? All right, so back to creating a load. So we're gonna go new active load. So at this point in time, I'm gonna create, what do I, sorry about that guys, I got a driver load. I'm gonna create a brokered load using a external carrier. And the difference is either I've got a company driver load or I got an external carrier load. Other than that, the rate and load confirmation is gonna look quite similar. The uh, bill to customer information is gonna be the same and the invoice is gonna be the same. So starting with the new active load, the top left hand side where it says load number. I cannot put a load number in there. It will automatically go in sequence to the next load number once I save it as an open active load. So if you do not have a bill to customer in the database, you can click on the green dots with a white plus, add the new bill to, once you save it, don't just exit out, once you save it, then you can type in the first couple of initials of the bill to customer's name and it'll automatically populate. Okay, so right now we have Andy's Dreaming. If I need to change anything, with the blue dots with an I, click on that, I can go inside and change a phone number or any information. All right, simple as that. Next, the person who is logging in is gonna show their name as a dispatcher. Now I can change that dispatcher to Craig or whoever if I had them in the system, okay? So when you log in, and for those who set up users, I generally suggest people to use their given name as the username. For one, they won't forget it. For two, it's gonna show up here as a dispatcher, and it's gonna show up on a rate and load confirmation, which you'll see shortly. Now, under Andy Streaming, he is assigned uh, Andy as a sales rep as well, so that automatically populates. You can have up to two sales reps on a load, okay, in which get a commission, or none at all, all right? The status is open once I save it, and again, it will assign a load number in sequence to the next one. WO represents like a work order or reference number. So say Andy Streaming wants his load number or reference number to show up. Okay, I can put it in there. It's gonna show up on a rate and load confirmation and it's gonna show up on a invoice for the load. Other numbers to the right of WO, if you hover your mouse over the pen and paper, it shows other numbers. So say in this case, I need to have something else show up. I don't want all this stuff, so I'm gonna just unselect it. Uh, what do I got, container number. I want a container number to show up. All right, and, oh, my apologies save this from the last one I did. And it will save your changes. <laughs> All right, so at this time, I just want a container number, and I'm gonna say container number, and I'd like it to show up on a customer confirmation, I'd like it to show up on a BOL, uh, rate and load confirmation, and an invoice. Click OK, it disappears. When I save it, you will see the number here on your dispatch board, and such as the WO number. So when Andy's Dreaming's load there and he calls in and says, hey, you know, I've got load number one, two, three, four, five, you're gonna look at your dispatch board, and again, you're gonna see that load number. All right, so excuse the at HST, this is for our Canadian customers. This is the only place that we have any tax implications at all, it's just for an HST. All right, so line haul. This is basically a flat rate. Okay, and you can change it to like rate per mile, put in the rate like 225 a mile, 1,000 miles, it'll then give you your, your end result. Or keep it as a line haul rate, which is a flat rate. I'm gonna say $10,000. P&Ds represents picks and drops, does not represent one, two, or three, it represents a dollar amount. So I'm gonna say there's a, a $500 additional uh, pick or drop. So it's given my total at the end. This will show up on the rate and load confirmation as a breakdown and then the total rate. FSC represents fuel surcharge. I can do it by a dollar amount or I can do it by a percentage. So I'm gonna just say 18%, 10,000 is 1,800. Giving me my total rate of 12,300. Other charges gives me the capability of having like lumper fees. Um, Okay, lumper fees, we're gonna say $100, okay, and we're gonna say okay. 
that added my additional charges. And as well, by clicking on the dollar symbol, we can have advances, etc. All right, make sure you say okay, and it's gonna save it here. So our next point, now for those of you that are concerned, either for either an external carrier load or even a company driver load, your company driver or the external carrier will not see your bill to information for your uh, invoice. What we're doing here, guys, when you create your new active load, you're actually creating an invoice, you're creating a carrier pay or driver pay, a rate and load confirmation, okay, all by completing just this information here. So at this point in time, we're just going to say A or assign later, because say I don't have a carrier at this point in time. So I'm just going to keep it as a sign later. I'm going to put in my information or require a, a boat hauling trailer. I can do my carrier fee by clicking on the dollar symbol, so a line haul rate. Well, let's just, uh, what do we got there? I'm going to say uh, 8,500. We're going to give him the 500 for the P&Ds. Then we're going to give him the $1,800 for the fuel surcharge. Okay, for a rate of 10,800. Go down and say okay. And that's going to be the rate that we're going to uh, offer out to my carrier. So we'll come back to adding the carrier there in a moment. Our next step. You should do this in a systematic way. Our next step is adding a shipper, okay? So if the shipper is not in the database, clicking on the green dot with a white plus, add the shipper's information, and then you go to the box below and type in the shipper's information. So at this time, I'm gonna select Viking out of uh, Coconut Grove, Florida. We're gonna have him pick up. We're gonna just say he picked up on the uh, 25th. And we're gonna select a time, we're gonna just say 5 a.m. You can put in a description if you so wish to do so. I'm going to say like a 56-foot Viking. It's going to be a truckload. Quantity is going to be one. It's going to be 6,800 pounds. And if you're offering a credit or not credit check, um, excuse me, Cargo Shield, which is extra insurance, you can uh, sign up for that, and that's through the truck stop. I, that's, this time we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, so now. You've got some shipping information in there. You do not have to put this in here. If you do not want to, you can leave it out, all right? And it should mirror everything that you just put in. So we've got 56 foot Viking. Any shipping notes you have, like handle with care, PO numbers or purchase order numbers, you can put those in here. Custom brokers, if you're moving freight into Canada or Mexico, again, you can add it live on the go by clicking on the green dot with a white plus. And again, when you see that anywhere in the system, you can add a new bill to, a new carrier, shipper, consignee, custom broker, and when we're in the drivers, you can add a driver, truck, and trailer. All right, our next step is adding a consignee. My wife likes this one. We have Andy's Dreaming Penetang Machine, Ontario, and just so happens to be, we're gonna have that boat arrive here, say, on Monday, or it should have arrived yesterday, <laughs> on Monday. All right. So now we can select our time, and it's good to use your times and dates, especially if you pick up on the same day and deliver on the same day, okay? That way it, it recognizes the, uh, the time difference. So at this point in time, we have most of our information in. Down at the bottom, you have pro miles and empty miles. If you wish to see the miles between where you're picking up and where you're delivering. If you needed to show, say from, uh, Miami, and you wanted to show how far it was from Miami, click on there. So from Miami to Coconut Grove is eight miles. Brings in the empty miles. So if the customer is arguing about wants a mileage rate or whatever the case may be, that's how you can do that. At this point in time, we're gonna click save. We have now just saved our next load and presently it's got a sign later. So I have neither a driver or a carrier on it at this moment. To go back inside of the load, I can click on the load number. Going back inside at this point in time, I can add any other information, or I can go to the bottom. I can uh, add a carrier. Okay, actually, right now I'm going to go to add a carrier. So, oh, actually, before we even do that, let's go to um, truckstop.com. Say I needed to post this load to the truck stop, and I have a truckstop.com uh, website. Okay, I put in the truck stop email address and password once saved. I then have the ability to post this load from Coconut Grove, Florida to Pentang Machine, Ontario. Okay, but you do need to have a truck stop account. All right, 
If you need assistance with that, please, again, give us a call. We'd be glad to help out with that. So I'm going to say now I've got a carrier just called in. They're accepting the load. I can put them into the database by clicking on the green dot. We're going to click on Alibon Boat Haulers. Again, the rate's going to be eight, uh, 10 800 Canadian dollars, or I can change it to US dollars. All right. And then again, we're going to click Save. I'm going to just refresh my page so it recognizes Alibon Boat Haulers. And how to refresh your page, guys, when you're in, say, delivered or completed or you're anywhere, you click on the ITS dispatch and it's going to bring you back to your main dispatch board. All right, so I'm going to click back on the load number. I now have Alibon Boat Haulers in there. And once I put a carrier or driver in, it gives me the capability to email it. Clicking on email, again, making sure I have the correct email address. If you want to make sure that you're getting it, send yourself a copy. If you receive it but the carrier's not, you know it's because their email is rejecting it. Okay? They would need to change up that email address. So this is one way of sending a rate and load confirmation out. The other is going down to the bottom right-hand side, clicking print. It's going to open up a print preview through Adobe Reader. And this is what a rate and load confirmation would look like for an external carrier load. First of all, I have a, um, a logo on mine. So it's got my logo, my name up at the top left-hand side. And then it shows a rate and load confirmation. It shows the dispatcher who is dispatching this load, the load number, the phone number of the dispatcher to, re to return a call, the ship date, okay, today's date, the fax number, email address of the dispatcher, showing the work order number or reference number that the customer wants to refer this load to, shows Alibon boat haulers, the phone number, fax number, equipment type, the agreed rate, US dollars, and the load status presently is open, okay, showing all of the shipper's information, custom brokers, again, any shipping notes like Go Door 3 and C Bob, the consignee's information, and then any uh, dispatch notes that is added to that preferences and note section by an administrator. And these will be permanent notes that will always show up. We have under the other numbers, the container number shows up. Then we have the breakdown of the carrier fee, the line haul rate, 8,500, fuel surcharge 1,800, fix and drops 500 for a total of 10,800. Load accepted by date and signature, their driver's name, cell phone number, truck and trailer number. Now, if you do wish to see this on there, the driver's name, cell, truck number, it is as simple as going into notes, contacts, I can put the dispatcher's name, their driver's name, and let's just go Andy, uh, phone number 888-338-9656. Okay, any email address, let's go uh, 707 and let's go save. Okay, once we have done that, again, I'm going to go print. It's going to open up the print preview through Adobe Reader. And the other information that we just added to it is going to show up. I'll show you where again. All right. So there's your rate and load confirmation. Oh. My apologies, it shows up here. <laughs> it, it would if I had the rest of the information. So I got the driver's phone number and the truck notes under the truck number. All right, so that is your rate and load confirmation. If you need to email it, you can actually go up to File, Save As, when it eventually opens, save it to your desktop. Once you have saved it to your desktop, you can then uh, go to your email source and assign it to an email, okay? As easy as that. Let's exit out of there. Now that was a rate and load confirmation for a, uh, an external carrier load. If you needed to do a bill of lading, clicking on the BOL, you can put in your own bill of lading number. You can select if there's a third party billing, the carrier who is gonna be assigned to, prepaid or collect or third party, the origin, Destination, if there's any emergency response number, you can put it in there, prepaid or collect. The value, any note, you can click the items. So if you needed to put more items in here, like two props, etc. 
and then you're going to click on the printer. This is going to open up a print preview again through Adobe Reader. Okay, and this again is what it's going to look like here. I'm quick. There we go. Okay, there is your bill of lading. Okay, again, if you have a company logo, it's going to show up here in the left hand side. Your load number, the BOL number, ship date, delivery date, PO numbers, freight charges, third party, showing the shipper, the consignee, third, bar, third party billing information, the transport company is hauling the load, the number of pieces, etc. And this is a BOL. Again, if you need to send it to them, you can either print it or fax it to them, or click File, Save As, save it as a PDF to your desktop, open up your email source and send it. All right, make sure you save your changes. That will remember that BOL that we've created. The next thing you can create by creating this load is a customer um, load confirmation. Okay, so say you and the customer had a verbal communication about this, but you wanted to send it over to them to make sure everything is correct, you can open up a customer uh, rate and load confirmation. Again, your carrier, nor does your company driver or uh, broker load see this. Okay, customer rate and load agreement. It shows to your customer who the dispatcher is, is taking down all of this information, the payment terms that you have with your customer, their work order number, the customer's name, contact, phone number, fax if it was there, agreed rate, it shows the shipper's information, consignee, any customer notes, again, that are added through preferences and notes. These are permanent notes that show up every time. And then the load breakdown, and then the container number if, if need be. Okay, and that was through other numbers. All right, simple as that. So once we have created our load, we can save it. And then once the load moves on, we can make that load dispatched. Again, it opens up my pop-up notification, sending my customer a notification, letting them know that that load is dispatched. All right, and then we continue that load right through to dispatch recovered or completed. We're gonna go completed and it disappears. It is going to the delivered and completed section, okay? Then this becomes the accounting person's job. They can go to accounting, accounting manager, and invoice the load from there. It is as simple as that. All right, so we just touched on an external carrier load. We are just going to see what a company driver load would look like. And the difference is, is carrier driver. With company driver, we have the driver's name, which we can select from our drop down, the equipment type, their truck or trailer number. Once added, that will show up on a rate and load confirmation. If you guys are using IFTA, make sure when you select your truck in the little house beside shipper, you're using the, uh, the location where that truck emptied out. So in this case, he emptied out in Penetang Machine, Ontario. We're gonna send him empty to Florida to pick up a load. And then he's going back to Penetang Machine, Ontario. Okay, and a rate and load confirmation will look like this. So everything is exactly the same, except for you have a company driver. So this is what your rate and load confirmation would look like for a company driver load. All right, again, you have your company logo up in the top left-hand side. You have a rate and load confirmation, the dispatcher's name and information, the driver's name, their mobile number, email address, equipment type that is required, truck and trailer number, Again, the same information for the shipper and consignee. Make sure you use the times and dates, especially if you pick up and deliver on the same day. And it is very important for IFTA for the field tax purposes. And then you have your dispatch notes. And because the driver's getting paid per mile, I have the driver mile rate down the bottom. And he's gonna make 710 to do this load. Again, it's as simple as that. All right, and that is what the difference is between a uh, external carrier load or a company driver load, okay? So that pretty much concludes us for getting started. We do have the administration under customers, under shippers, consignees, this is your database. Now when you're inside of a actual pending or open active load, you can add a new bill to, a new carrier, shipper, consignee, live on the go, once saved, then you've got the capability just typing in the first couple of initials into the box, 
it'll automatically populate. Okay, as easy as that. We are just gonna briefly, before I let you go, touch on a couple of other types of loads. This more pertains towards, um, well, actually it could cover both of uh, an external carrier load or a company driver load, okay? Under new pending load, we're gonna carry, keep it as a carrier load. You can have a multiple carrier load where you get carrier number one, carrier number two, and carrier number three. Only up to three carriers can we have on a load. It starts out with the load information, the bill two. So I've got Andy streaming. He's picking up in Coconut Grove, Florida. He's going to Penetang. Driver number one started out of Miami, uh, got the load and made it to Georgia. And he had to pass that load off to somebody else. Driver number two picked it up in Georgia, brought it to uh, um, Detroit. Driver number three picked it up from Detroit and carried it on. This is a multiple carrier load by clicking on the letters M then you just select the drop down either it's assign later or multiple carrier and then it gives you these boxes up above the same thing goes for those of you that are using company drivers so we got a company driver so Andy's doing the load presently and then we find out Andy gets to the border and he can't make it across I now need to have a multiple driver load the load information stays the same so for the billing purposes, the, care, the, the customer does not need to know that driver number one couldn't cross the border. So he picked a load up in, in uh, Coconut Grove, Florida, and made it to Detroit. Driver number two picked that load up in Detroit and continued it on to Penetang Machine, Ontario. As well, you can add up to three drivers. That's it. That's all. Okay? So that is your um, multiple driver or multiple customer loads. All right? Next, under help training videos we do have everything broken down into smaller segments for your convenience how to create a dispatch or driver load how to create an LTL load for a company driver load how to create a multiple driver load okay how to create a multiple carrier load again everything is broken down for your convenience in here all right so that does pretty much conclude us for the getting started you can always get a hold of us from help, contact info. Our number is 888-338-9656, extension two for the training support department during the regular business hours of nine to five, Monday through Friday, Eastern Standard Time. I'd like to thank you for participating in the Getting Started training and have yourselves a great